Hey guys, just finished up an interview with Spencer Davis, a real estate photographer out of Vermont. And two things that I got out of his interview was one, uh, he's a full-time solo real estate photographer with flexibility to his schedule. And two, he's finding success with only eight to 10 repeat customers. This one is a great interview for you beginner real estate photographers. Hope you enjoy the interview. Hey guys, Jordan here with Real Estate Photography Hub and today I'm here with Spencer Davis, real estate photographer and YouTuber from uh, Burlington, Vermont. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Spencer, uh, for taking time out of your busy day and joining me uh, on this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, so we're gonna start out with some rapid fire questions so we can get to know you uh, really quick, your profile as a real estate photographer. When did you start? Uh, I started in 2014. Do you do uh, real estate photography part-time or full-time? Uh, it's full-time. Full-time. And what's been your best year so far? Mm -mm. Probably last year, 2022. Awesome. And what made it your best year? Um, my main clients were busy. Uh, I was doing a lot of drone stuff, Matterport stuff, in addition to normal photography. And how long did it take you to transition from full from to full time from part time? Um, it took about six months. Um, was like working at a burrito shop part time. Burritos, and, uh, where you know word gets around and takes off. <laughs> Very nice. Not too many uh, real estate photographers in Burlington, Vermont. No, there's a few, but I don't. I don't even know them. <laughs> I don't know them personally. <laughs> All right. So, roughly, how many real estate agents are in uh, the small market that you service? Um, that's a good question. There's actually quite a bit for like the area size, but a lot of them like don't do it very often. It's kind of like their side hustle. Right. Like they'll sell like two properties a year or something. Right. And how many repeat customers do you uh, service on a regular basis that's helping make it your full time career? Um, I'd say between eight and 10. Eight and 10 customers? Yeah. Just like regularly coming back. Like, because they'll, they'll do like, I'll do like every single one of their properties. And they're also the ones with like the big, like the big branches. Right. And so, how, yeah. how did you get those customers? Um, I started out going around to like offices with just like a brochure and someone like sat me down and was like really interested in it and got started with her and she's been a client of mine ever since. And, um, the other, other ones I got through just like emailing, just cold emails and like, like most people don't answer, but like occasionally someone does. And, once you get like two, like all of a sudden everybody knows about you. And so you get like phone calls and texts pretty quickly. Do you recommend jumping in full time to start or transitioning from a part time position into full time? I would recommend transitioning, like make it like your uh, weekend thing at first or like a one day a week type thing at first, just because it's. Um, it's not, I don't think it's for everybody. There are times that I don't even think it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> But um, so. I wanna to touch back on the point that you brought up that you said you only need eight to 10 reoccurring customers to make it a full-time career. I think some people that get started in real estate photography think that they need, I need to go get hundreds of customers to make this thing work. No way. I, I disagree with that. Like you got to build that relationship. And when you have a good relationship with your client, it, everything becomes easier. Like, um, the shoot becomes easier. Like there's a lot, there's more flexibility and, um, cause things change all the, like schedules change all the time. Like someone gets sick or has something happen, like a homeowner or something. And, you have to move stuff around. So it's good to keep like that good relationship with those few that you have, I think. And uh, I think that's probably the most important part. 
Because they're always going to call you. <laughs> right. You know. And that's the best thing. And I think for new real estate photographers that are watching this, just, just knowing that it, it's not going to take a ton. But backing into how you got those, obviously it did take work initially to, to land those customers. And mm -hmm. as a, a solo real estate photographer, you can only service so much. So you might be at a at a position where you feel pretty comfortable and are happy where you're at. Um, but how long how long did it take you? So you went you were part time. And then about six months in you, you were full time. And then um, do you feel like you're at capacity? Or are you still trying to bring on new customers? Or are you just feeling comfortable right now? I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Um, the winters are a little slow, but then summers are so like spring, summer, fall is so busy that um, when it, I'm in the winter, it's like, oh, I should go out and try to network some more and get some more clients. And then March comes around. It's oh, glad I didn't do that because <laughs> right. everybody's like, it just picks back up again. So I guess depending on the market that you're in, the seasonality of real estate photography. So for us here in Phoenix, uh, which is our main market, we don't, we don't experience, we do experience seasonality, right? Like it starts to slow down November, December, and then midway through January, it starts to pick up because we don't really have snow on the ground. But uh, so for uh, a market like yours, where winters m are a little bit more harsh, maybe there's more uh, snow. Is it like a snow thing or is it just a time of year? What are you getting? Because you've been in the business for, for a long time. I think it's a time of year thing. Um, <clears throat> no one wants to list around Thanksgiving, Christmas. Um, so you'll get like a little bit of an uptick in January, but... Um, it's just no one wants to move in the winter or deal with all that stuff in the winter either. So, so is it like clock to wait till spring? <clears throat> is it like clockwork <laughs> every year where March it just <laughs> the light switch turns on? Yeah, it is. And you've been hibernating for the winter time, just charging up your batteries, just waiting for a lot. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, that's basically what it's like. I guess with the seasonality, uh, how do you manage your business, right? Because you're you you are obviously going to make a whole lot of money in the summertime, but not so much in the wintertime. What's, what are those habits and those things that you do to, to make it, um, you know, where you're not hurting so much in the wintertime? Um, do you mean like financially? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of, how do you, how do you set yourself up? Yeah. Like financially. Um, and then also what do you do when it is slow? Hmm. So I like, make way more than I need to over the summer and the fall and the spring. And so I have like a certain amount set aside, just like that's going to cover my expenses for those two to three months where I like have like maybe eight shoots a month, <laughs> you know? Um, and so it, it ends up working out pretty well. And I, when I'm slow, I try to just like learn new stuff. I've been getting into 3d modeling. Ah, so uh, that's been pretty fun. Talk to us a little bit about um, the additional uh, services that you offer outside of photography that uh, ha have made a, a you know a, a big revenue impact on your business. Um, definitely drone stuff, um, drone photos, drone video. That's been that's been good. Um, not many people using Matterport these days, um, but the drone stuff has been. A big ad. All right, Spencer. So as a solo real estate photographer, talk to us a little about uh, what you really like about it and maybe some of the struggles that you experience sometimes uh, being uh, solo. Well, um, it can get kind of lonely <laughs> if you're like, sometimes like the client isn't even there. They just give you the lockbox code and you'll go like a week without really working with anybody. <laughs> you just like show up to the empty house, take your pictures and then edit them later. Um, there are times that like in the summers when I'm like really bogged down, I am tempted to outsource my editing, but mm. I'm like, Oh, like that's like, that's like almost part of the production. It's not really, it, to me, it's like, doesn't even seem like it's post-production cause you're still building the photo. Um, so I don't know. And like, I have like a specific way I like to do it a specific way. I like things to look and I just, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing it because <laughs> I don't want someone else doing it. <laughs> so you have, uh, so have there been times where you're, it's like two in the morning and you're up editing photos, trying to get, get stuff done? There have been. Yeah. 
Not so much anymore. I'm a little bit better at managing my time like that. But when I first started, there were when things got really busy, like when I first started, it was it was a lot because I was doing like HDR and like, <clears throat> that's just really hard to work with sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And one thing uh, for those that don't know, Spencer has a YouTube channel and uh, he puts out some great content. And that's how I got uh, introduced to you was your methods because uh, you shoot Flambian, I, I, be, I, I believe, right? You used to shoot HDR, now mm -hmm. you shoot Flambian. But um, as a solo real estate photographer, you're almost forced to kind of be efficient. Like for me, mm -hmm. there's YouTube videos out there where you're watching a 20 minute video of somebody editing one picture. I'm thinking to myself, there's 40 pictures or whatever. <laughs> Are you gonna spend all afternoon editing this one property? So I, I, I find it interesting to see the different ways that people edit their photos where they're balancing time commitment and quality and kind of just seeing. And I thought you did, you do a great job of balancing quality and uh, time because on average, how long does it take you to edit your properties? Um, about an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Depending on the size. Yeah. Smaller ones take like 45 minutes or like kind of dumpy ones or like you don't really care if there's like a flash shadow showing up. It's like no one's going to notice that. But if they're a little nicer, it's good to go that a couple extra steps. All right, Spencer. So as a solo real estate photographer, talk to us about uh, a busy day. What does that exactly look like? Oh, busy day. So I like to edit in the morning as much as I can. Um, so here's like a random Wednesday, I wake up at like six 30, um, get on my computer by seven, edit from seven to 10, 10 30, usually first shoot of the day is at 11. And so I'll go try to have one at 11 and then either one or two. And, and sometimes like there's, sometimes there's a third one in there. Um, but I try to keep it to two a day, uh, just because three gets crazy if you're trying to get them all back the next day. Right. So go to a shoot from 11 to 1230 and then get lunch somewhere and then drive however, whatever distance to the next one. And then um, after finish that, come home. And then I actually like when I come home, I actually load everything onto my computer mm. and I um, like just get them in my Lightroom library, get like the um, the initial editing done, just like applying like a bunch of presets to the photos. And then usually I can close my laptop at about four 30. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's not a bad day. It's just it, like, and then if I do have, if I have a busier day coming up, I'll end up editing that night, at least one of the houses that way I'm like not congested the next day the thing that really makes the days busy is the amount of driving mm. um it's a lot of driving <laughs> I mean, you also have a, a a a good uh real estate photography youtube channel so talk to us a little bit about that goals and maybe some stuff uh courses or anything that you that you offer um you know for helping real estate photographers yeah, I started that channel in 2020. It's been fun. It's a, uh, it's kind of fun to find ways to explain to people, like breaking things down into like, in ways that like people are gonna understand. Because, like, I learned a lot of my stuff from uh, Rich Baum, mm. and uh, like, but I was like, there's there's like a better way to explain some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No offense, Dave. I think he's great. <laughs> If you haven't checked out Spencer's channel, I will link to it or uh, do it. How, how else, uh, where else are you active on where people can uh, reach out to you if they have questions? I have a TikTok. Uh, it's at Spence J Park. It's um, really short form tutorials. The most recent one I did was like, how do you like make a, a ceiling totally white? So all it was was like, oh, just drag a box around the ceiling, like mask back in the fan color and that's it it's like so they fit within that like minute and a half awesome well i appreciate you spencer taking time uh at your busy day and and uh, joining me for this interview and we'll see you guys on the next one